Villagers are overpowered. I mean, I can buy infinite diamond tools for like one emerald each. I'm rich. But Mojang recently released an experimental snapshot that gives villagers a big nerf. Now you can only get certain enchanted books from villagers depending on what biome they're from. And my super flat world has exactly one biome, plain. And let's just say the enchantments it comes with are pretty plain. So before the new update, I'm gonna build the greatest enchanting library that Minecraft has ever seen. But first I have to check on my villager breeder. Hello, are you two in love? Oh, Bruh. oh no. So I actually already got my first villager here. And I have this rail line already set up to transport them. A quick switcheroo. No. All right, this should do. I'll even give him a little skylight. You're coming with me. Get in the, get in the, oh, switch that. There we go. Welcome to your new home, sir. All right, we need a lot more of these guys. I've got a few more villagers around here with good trades. Just gonna corral these bad boys. Don't, don't you dare place, place the block, place it. No. You know what? Luck of the sea, looting, you get death. <laughs> Serves you right, bane of arthropods. More like bane of my existence. Come on, let's go. I don't have all day. Now we're talking. This is starting to be a party. So now we're just gonna make a nice fancy floor design for this basement area. Then we just gotta make spots for all these unpaid interns to stand. Oh, hey, I knew I heard you. All right, so we've got five out of 40 villagers ready to go into their spots, but moving these guys and getting the rest of the trades is gonna be a huge pain. So I think instead I should fill you guys in on the full plan for this library. I really wanna lay out the basic shape of the building so we can just grab some concrete and start sketching this thing out. My idea is basically a really big version of my town library growing up. We have the main hall, which will have a big dome roof and a spiral staircase, and we'll have some way to access the basement where we keep the villagers. That was the scariest part of my town library growing up. I still remember the sounds. Then there are two wings, one for fiction and one for non-fiction. And in the front, we can have a big lower courtyard area where you could eat lunch or find a shady place to read. So that's our plan. I decided to put the library at the top level of our city, which is where I want all the government buildings to go. You know, city hall, post office, courthouse, that sort of thing. The only thing in the way is this tree farm I built and used like one time. I could work this into the build and try to hide it, or I could do this. Yes, yes, die, die. All right, I should go collect some resources. The pallet on this build is gonna use a ton of different types of wood, and I'm also planning to make heavy use of mud and sandstone. The only thing I have already is sandstone because I collected a bunch ahead of time. Luckily, I can get oak, jungle, birch, and spruce from my wood farm, which I fixed again. If it breaks in this episode, I will cry. So I basically spent like 10 hours just running the farm while playing other games, and I got a pretty good amount of each type. I still need to get the dark oak, but that can wait. The next day was mud day. So I killed two birds with one stone and got rid of a bunch of water around the base while collecting dirt. I'm draining the water so I can lower the sea floor and give it a bit more depth. But that's a project for another day. I hate doing mud because the converter is attached to my wood farm and it always seems to break. But we're doing it anyways, baby. It's all about believing. All right, so it turns out my collection system had broken at some point and I just wasted like a solid two shulkers of dirt before I noticed. But eventually after another full real life day of work, I had tons of mud ready to go. The only thing we're missing at this point is dark oak wood. So time to put on a movie and get to work. And we are done. I got a bunch of shulkers of dark oak, meaning we've officially got all our groceries. So I think it's time to get rid of this ugly magenta outline. We're using stripped oak around the base of the main hall. And then for the wings, I'm doing this nice trim with these jungle slabs and stairs. All right, yeah, this is a good start. For the second layer, I feel like the looms are perfect, but they're a bit much on their own. So I'm alternating with the jungle planks. And now we can start to transition to our sandstone. Okay, timeout. I keep falling into the basement, so we need to put a floor down before I lose my mind. Also, I really don't want my villagers to be struck by lightning. So I placed in a quick floor, leaving room around the edges for the walls, and then I started getting all the windows into place. I used blackstone and black glass to get a nice strong contrast going with the sandstone. Hey, this is starting to look like an actual building. Although the general layout of the build is based on my town library, I definitely wanted to have a much more monumental feel, kind of like the Library of Congress in Washington, DC. I went there with my eighth grade class, and there was this insane main hall with a crazy tall dome ceiling. So to match that vibe, I started by making a grand entrance staircase with some terracotta trimming and tons of tiny little details. Then I designed an intricate circular pattern to make the floor of the main hall feel really fancy and refined. Lastly, I built a big window to fill in the remaining gap in the back of the structure. 
All right, guys, at this point, this main hall just needs a roof. So I began by creating a little ledge around the top of the windows so the dome will be slightly recessed. I went super crazy with the detailing using lecterns and even candles. Okay, now I'm starting the foundation of the dome and I'm actually using these chiseled bookshelves just because they have such a cool texture. Okay, I'm finally ready for the dome, but I wanna make sure it has that ripply effect I saw in the dome of the Capitol building on my trip to DC. I wasn't really sure how to accomplish that look, so I just started creating some lines out of sandstone to create a wireframe for the dome. Then I made some more lines in between those with mud bricks to get a nice contrast going. Dude, this looks so weird from down here. Then it was just a matter of filling in all the missing blocks with oak wood, which took a surprisingly long time, but I think it was worth it. Man, this looks so good so far. I'm really happy with how this is coming up. I'm so tempted to just keep building, but at this point, we've neglected the villagers for a minute. And to make things even worse, one of them seems to have died somehow. The, I, I swear I had five. So I'm just gonna keep resetting these guys and see how many trades I can knock off our list. We should probably name tag these guys before there's way too many of them. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is add a shulker box above each villager slot for easy storage. So I'm heading over to the end dimension. I know I should just build a shulker farm, but then I won't be able to waste hours doing this. I think I've had enough montaging. I brought back more than enough shulker shells and I got tons of other good stuff too. So I started decorating the trading hall, which I think I'm gonna call the archives from now on just cause it sounds a lot cooler than the villager basement. And then I put a lectern and a shulker box at each station and I put down a sign for each enchantment. Okay, so this place has 40 slots, but my list has swift sneak on it, which is not obtainable on super flat. And I also have an empty slot as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out two of these spots on this side and we can make a staircase here going up. Okay, everything is just about set up down here. So I think it's time we start curing these guys and getting them into place. We have 11 villagers so far, so I'm gonna bring 55 apples so I can make sure I cure them all five times. Ooh, I see a helmet boy. Please sir, have a seat, I insist. And in you go. What? Are you kidding me? I just had to wait all day for you to spawn, so you better not misbehave, mister. Okay, this time I'm going to personally defend. Why? Okay, third time's a charm, right? I learned my lesson. This time I'm gonna actually split them up so maybe they won't spawn a golem. No, why did I just do that? Oh, please stop, please just. <laughs> okay, I got most of them back in, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cure these guys and I'll cure the remaining ones after. While I waited for the zombies to cure, I got a bit of work done on the interior of the main hall. I also started putting a book on each lectern, listing all the different trades that each villager offers. It took me about 40 minutes to get all the villagers into their slots, and then afterwards, I decided to do some more reset. I got channeling, curse of binding, lure, and silk touch. I learned my lesson from the iron golems and started curing them before getting any more. Once those four were in place, I did one last round of resetting, getting unbreaking, projectile protection, curse of vanishing, frost walker, and impaling. And while curing those five, Five guys, I finished off the dome with a cool stained glass skylight. I just wanted to see how this looks with this shader called Rethinking Voxels. Yo, this is so cool, look at the colors. After that, I got each villager into place, bringing our enchantment count right to the halfway point. And also this staircase knocked off another two slots. So with the villagers halfway there, I'm finally allowing myself to build once again. I'm so excited to do the wings of the library so we can really see how big this thing is gonna be. All right, let's do this. The style looks fancy, but it's actually easier than you think. I basically just put windows with sandstone pillars on each side everywhere I possibly could. All right, here it is. Oh. All right, here it is, the finished wing. It looks really good on the outside, but uh, yeah. In here, this gaping pit makes this kind of a nightmare liminal space. So rather than coming up with another floor pattern, I'm just gonna copy the one from the archives below. It's recycling, it's good for the planet, you know? 
Doing the floor was honestly like the most zen thing I've done in this video so far. I was totally zoning out and just watching YouTube videos about Zelda lore, and before I knew it, the entire hole was sealed off. This feels so much better already, and there's so much space to do such an awesome library interior. Okay, time to do everything I just did again on this side. I'm starting with the floor this time, just cause that makes way more sense. Since I'd already done it once, I was going way faster this time until I got distracted. Aw, a cat spawned. Wait, come back. Come here, kitty. That's right, come here, have some fish. There you go. I'm gonna name you Tome. Every good library needs a cat wandering around, so this is perfect. After that adorable encounter, I wrapped up the rest of the wing pretty quickly. The only real obstacles were some mobs in the roof and a few phantom attacks, but I persevered and I was able to completely finish off the exterior of the library. As much as I'm in love with how this looks, one thing is really bugging me. The smooth stone path going around my castle is looking pretty outdated these days. Most of my city uses dirt paths or a mix of stone blocks to create a worn pavement kind of look. So even though this is gonna take forever, I'm gonna completely rip all this out and redo it. And while I'm at it, we can get rid of this old half broken redstone lamp system that comes on at night. So I got to work ripping up all the old paths and redstone around the base, and then I laid down a brand new road, which I think looks so much better. When I got to the quadrant containing our library, I made sure to connect the new road to the main entrance, and I even created small connections to the courtyards we're gonna be making. I'm so much happier with how this all looks now, but we still have so much more to get done. We've got the courtyards to build and tons more trades to lock in, but worst of all, we've got space. A lot of space. And all this space needs to be filled up with a beautiful interior, starting with some staircases. My childhood came full circle when I built this spiral staircase up to the balcony on the second level. Afterwards, I created a staircase to access the archives, which finally connected up the build for the first time. Then I used stairs, walls, and lanterns to give the dome ceiling a more finished look. I even made this intricate chandelier with candle crystals to reinforce the fanciness. The end rods make it look super elegant. So from down here, it's looking pretty good, but we need some real library staples, you know? Places to study, a mean librarian. And we definitely need some useful stuff too, like an enchantment table. And of course, lots of books, right, Tome? Isn't that right? I'm gonna put the reception area here since we have the space right near the entrance. And we'll put down some little knickknacks to dress it up a little bit. Perfect. Now we're just gonna sprinkle some little study areas around and we'll put a nice big study table in this spot here. Finally, it was time to start adding bookshelves and it instantly felt a hundred times more like a library. But I'm leaving the chisel bookshelves empty for now. You'll see why soon. I moved on to the second level of the main hall, adding more bookshelves and study areas, and I even added a bit of greenery on the shelves. Over the past few updates, things like candles and decorated pots have made it so much easier to get that cozy feeling. So it's a bit dark up here at night, but I did a quick lighting check and it looks like everything is fully mop proof. Honestly, I kind of like it, it feels fitting. I gave Tom a name tag real quick and began preparing for the next task, capturing a library. So I set up this little railway here. I'm gonna grab some milk just in case things get spicy. Okay, no librarians over here. Oh, I think I see one. Oh, she's mean, all right. Ow, this is way too far away anyhow. No, 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 no. Okay, new plan, mob sorter on. Yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't just do this in the first place. Okay, here we go, we got one. And she's down, push the cart. Yes, we got her. You are just like the librarian at my middle school. Okay, down you go. You don't go anywhere. I've got the perfect name tag. Okay, now this is the hard part. Time to do some very basic redstone. Uh, connect this up, painting here. Get down there, please, ma'am. Oh my God, she hit Tome! Mm, heal. Oh, come here, kitty, let's get you someplace safe. Don't scare me like that. All right, guys, I think I got this working. We come over here and hit this button and bam, our mean librarian comes and yells at us. Then we can hit it again, she goes back. Oh, come on, is that not the coolest thing ever? Oh my God, the bat. <laughs> but we've still got one empty spot in our main hall here. And I think this is the perfect place for our enchanting setup. I use this amazing design by Rexstone that has a really unique way of selecting your enchantment level. I put the tutorial in the description. Okay, so check it out. It looks pretty standard, right? But underneath here, we have a lectern and I hit a little book behind that you can pop in there and each page controls one bookshelf. So you can go all the way down or you can just take it out for the full 30 level enchant. But I just had to put 
put my own little spin on it. So I installed these lapis launchers on each side. And after you're done, you can just throw the extra in this little hidden hopper here. And with that, I think this main hall is finished, which leaves the wings, the courtyard, and of course, our villager basement. And speaking of the villagers, I took a break from building to do a little bit more resetting. I got six more enchantments, and while curing the villagers, I started one of the hardest tasks yet. Remember when I said we were leaving the chiseled bookshelves empty for a bit? Well, this is why. I want every single book in this library to have an actual name. This might be the craziest part of the whole project so far. So I got to work naming tons of books while my villagers cured. And after another round of curing, just eight enchantments were left. So I'm trying to fill in these books, but my anvils keep breaking. So it's a perfect time to build a little place for my anvils. I think right here in front of the mezzanine stairs is the perfect spot to put it. I followed another amazing tutorial by Rexstone to quickly get the redstone for the contraption into place. Then I finally added some walls to the mezzanine, including some entrances that we can somehow link up to the courtyards later. The anvils stack up perfectly to the back of the build so we can easily hide the refill spot. Okay, so say our anvil breaks, we press this and... Ah, oh, that is so satisfying. With the anvil station done, I spent a whole live stream taking suggestions from chat you for books. Me. And now I'm feeling so inspired to make this an actual functioning library with books that really teach you stuff. Like this book that teaches you how to make all the stews. Or even stuff like this book of haikus that we're working on in the poetry section. Imagine if instead of checking the Minecraft wiki anytime I need to remember how to craft or brew something, I could just go to my library. We can even have super flat specific stuff, like this book I wrote about the extinct mobs. So if you want to help out, I made a forum channel for the project. Just go to discord.gg slash mogswamp. I actually just picked out this billboard design by GameDoor64 for the harbor, so I definitely want to do more community stuff like this. I've got so many books ready to go now, but most of these sections aren't even built yet. So while I build this up, I'll give you some of my favorite titles so far. I began with the fiction wing on the right hand side of the building. I knew I wanted to put a children's section on this side, kind of like my town library had. My best advice to anyone struggling with large interiors like this is to find ways to divide up the space. I made sure to utilize all of the vertical space available so that we can actually grab all the books at the tippy top. Whew, that's high up. To finish things off, I came in with some nice detail work. I made a smaller chandelier in the same style as the grand one in the main hall, and then I hung some paintings on the walls way up near the ceiling. But somehow, it's still missing something. This part of the library is just screaming for a super secret hidden entrance. So I grabbed my redstone and got to work. It was really hard to fit everything in such a tight space, but I think I just about pulled it off. All right, so the secret room is actually right above here. You go up the stairs, then up the ladder, and if you put books in, Bam, entrance revealed. It's pretty tight in here and I'm honestly not really sure what we can do with it yet. I do have one idea, but it'll have to wait till the end of the video. With the wing finished, I could finally start sectioning off each genre and filling in books. I filled in fiction novels on the back wall, including such classics as Of Caves and Cliffs and The Great Flatsby. 20,000 Leagues Under Salacia went into the science fiction section in the back. Then I stashed romance, mystery, and horror novels upstairs, including the steamy Fifty Shades of Dirt, the puzzling case of the extra suspicious stew and the terrifying read the house of leads lastly i put fantasy novels at the very top including the best-selling hits a wrinkle in tps alex in wonderland and james and the giant gapple with all the fiction books in place now the non-fiction books needed a home too i want the two wings to be slightly different so i'm trying to mix up the furniture as much as i can while still following the same general layout i got most of the way through building the final wing but while flying back and forth for materials i just couldn't help but notice how boring the landscaping around the library looked so I I took a break to start adding some natural beauty to the plot, starting with the awkward space behind the main hall. I added in some custom trees and rocks, which was also a good opportunity to hide the anvil refill station. Then I moved to the front of the building and put an actual railing along those gaping holes for the courtyard. Lastly, I created a bunch of beacons with some nether stars I had sitting around and used them to create some beautiful sunken lights to mob proof everything. That was actually a good break. I came up with some cool ideas for this wing while I was landscaping. And so I began to implement all my new ideas, starting with an area for astronomy. I also added a catwalk to the top section, and I really just tried to make the layout feel like this is where the research gets done. Okay, I think this thing is ready to be split up into sections. Once I had everything sectioned out, I finally sorted the last of my pre-made books into all the different sections. It's still pretty empty in here, but I can't wait to see these shelves come to life with the help of the community. Well, I think, other than the basement, this library interior is officially finished. So it's finally time to tackle the very last thing I need to build. 
the Coryards. I came up with this new palette using oxidized copper and endstone, and I think it actually looks so cool with this build. I figured out where the stairs would connect to the villager basement, and then copied that to the other side. I'm really trying to make each side different, just like I did for the interior of each wing, but I did decide to use the same fountain on each side to serve as a sort of focal point. After a bit of work, I was finished with the base layer of each side, and it was time to go back in with some details. I put some picnic tables on one side, and a big garden area on the other. Then I made one final sweep across the entire front of the building to add in a bunch of custom trees. I also added this little birdhouse tower thing to add one more little point of interest. Man, I wish I could get parrots for this. Yo, this looks so amazing. I want to cry right now. The trees really did finish this off. Oh, I'm so happy to be done building. But before I can end the video, we have eight final trades that have been haunting my dreams. In fact, I'm adding a horror book to my library called Eight Final Trades. So I set up a stopwatch just to see how bad the last state would end up being. Honestly, didn't take as long as I thought. Tower 5 was the last one, and it took the longest by far, at 16 minutes and 19 seconds. I was super relieved to finally be done. Wait a minute, that's not 40. Yeah, so one of the slots is for soul speed, which isn't tradable. Maybe I'll make a portal and some storage and hook it up to my piglin bartering farm, because currently I just throw those books out. Or maybe another enchantment's gonna be added, I don't know. While curing the villagers for the last time, I decided to fix the hole behind the staircase and the exposed redstone on the ceiling, both of which were really bothering me. Last one, I quickly sorted the last of the villagers and got all of their books formatted. I also went ahead and got a shulker box full of every enchantment, since that was on the list too. I mean, I'm not gonna show you each one, but if you really don't believe me, the world download will be up on Patreon soon. I shoved the zombie under the stairs for safekeeping, and then I cleaned up our villager pit that started everything. Man, I think I'm tearing up a bit. Okay, now we can drop right down in the basement from the top. Oh, that's so nice. The only other thing bothering me was this weirdly empty wall, so I added one last touch that every library needs. A book return. Check it out, now I can be super lazy and just throw my books in here. I mean, I still have to sort them later, but I don't know, maybe I'll add a book sorter someday or something. Man, I think this is my favorite build I've ever made. Oh yeah, one more thing. Remember this secret space? I'm gonna turn it into the restricted section and fill it with banned books. If you wanna see me work on it, I'm live on YouTube every Wednesday. All right, see ya.